And just like that, we are back in the studio, back from the mountains. Okay, took out the Nike Pegasus 35 Turbos today. Paired with these Solomon socks, it was a special day. No discomfort, no blisters, no nothing. Just the Turbos, okay, I don't like the Turbos at sub 545 pace per mile. They're just a little too mushy, but it's six minutes a mile. 610, 615, and I know like those paces might not apply to you directly, but just think like whatever your fast race pace is, I am not feeling it in the turbos, but a nice solid long run like today, which I'll just dive into that right now. They, they're feeling really, really nice. Okay, so 22 miles today. I didn't realize, I didn't remember this, but I used to run at that location while I was a student at the University of Colorado when I was on the CU cross country team. I actually made a vlog, go check it out, all about that road, Magnolia Road. We call it Magnolia Road, even though I guess it's called Magnolia Drive. Anyway, go check it out. It's kind of the story behind Magnolia Road for me and how it played a part in me walking on to the CU cross country team. So go check that out. And today, 22 miles, you start off, I think you're like right at 8,800 feet, maybe 89. It's like you're right under 9,000 feet above sea level. And then you actually, I did some extra mileage and then you drop down to, I don't know, my guess is about 7,800 and then you go back. So it's an out and back run. So 22 miles, 620 per mile, 35 kilometers. Everyone outside the United States, 35 kilometers, which I just calculated is about three 58, basically four minutes per kilometer. So a really good long run. Uh, tomorrow, I think I'm going to talk about, or maybe the next day, my marathon training update and how many more long runs I have left with basically four and a half weeks to go in this training block before Cleveland. So all is well there. And one last point before diving into building our mental strength. If you want to call it toughness, you can. I prefer mental strength confidence. That's right. Mental confidence. That's how I approach racing and training. So we're going to get into, into that in a second, but guess what? No live stream tonight. YouTube has stopped my abilities to live stream because of what happened with the Boston Marathon. So that's not good. I'm investigating. I frankly don't really have time to figure out exactly why. So this is not good. So I'm not going to live stream tonight. I can't. Like it will, like it, it, it's, it, the feature has been taken away uh, for now. I'm confident it'll be back Hopefully soon. Hopefully it's, I'm basically, I got a strike on the account, a copyright strike. So hopefully it's basically that strike will remain for three months and then they take it away. I'm really hoping that the live streaming is not gone for three months, but I'll keep you updated instead. What I'm going to do, remember all the questions that you've sent me, they are in this box. Plus another, you know, 10 to 20 questions have arrived in the last, just in the last week. So they will end up in this box. So instead tomorrow, so Wednesday, when we would be doing the live streaming, I'm going to record a Q and a video, upload it. And you can watch that as I answer your questions from this box. I apologize. This is life. We move on, we march on, I'm not giving up, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid. All right, now we're going to dive into mental toughness, but as I already mentioned, I prefer to approach it from the standpoint, from the description of mental confidence, okay? Um, and, okay, let me, and I'll try and be as, as concise and clear as possible. Basically, these are some rules that I've created for myself, and uh, this is it's based on 20 years of running, and frankly, it, it may not be what you want to hear, but like, here we go. You ready for this? I'm just going to read a few here. Fitness does not lie. Fitness does not lie. All right. So when you're getting ready for a peak race and you are, you want to go win the state championship as a cross country team, or you want to win the four by 800 at the state track meet, or you're, you're striving for that Boston qualifier time or you are striving to set a PR in a road 10K. Fitness does not lie, okay? That's number one. Number two, put yourself in, and these are all, what I'm, what I'm describing right now, this is to help alleviate some of the mental anxiety that you might be putting on yourself as you are approaching a peak race. Okay, number two, put yourself in uncomfortable situations in your training. Remember, I've talked about calculated risks in your training, specifically from the three and a half week mark, let's just call it three week mark to six week mark leading up to your peak race. So in that three to six weeks out from a peak race, that is when I 
which is right now, which is why I went to the mountains and ran 22 miles at 8,500 8, feet above sea level and at a pretty good clip. That is why I did that today. I put myself in an uncomfortable, I was quote unquote a smidge, I'll just say it, a little nervous today. Like, okay, this is gonna hurt. And I did that on purpose. Anyway, so that's number two, put yourself in uncomfortable situations. And number three, learn and this is i've been running for 20 years maybe you've only been running for three months and that's okay and it takes time just got to be patient with it learn to enjoy and in parentheses i'm going to put embrace the suffering the pain it takes time it really does there's no other way to say it other than you've got to be patient and consistent in your training and over time your body will learn to quote unquote enjoy the suffering today on some of those hills from mile 14 to 20 it was it's like there's some serious hills up at magnolia road and i was mentally making the decision using my free will we'll get to that in a second to enjoy this suffering it's a crazy place to go it's kind of going into that pain cave as we often talk about in ultra running so i went to the pain cave and i sat there as i was still running and i was like okay I'm going to enjoy this pain, my legs screaming at me, my lungs, I was breathing, of course I was breathing. I'm going to learn to enjoy this breathing and, um, and of course, focus on my form. That was big today. We won't get into that too much, but um, I had to make the choice today to enjoy the pain, embrace the pain. Um, and I'll just add one more thing. There's no luck. There's no luck in long distance running. I'm sorry, I'd, I don't believe there's luck. In basketball, you can make a half-court shot, and I think there might be a little... Now I realize Steph Curry is pretty good at hitting half-court shots, so there is some talent there. But sometimes you see a half-court shot, and you're like, okay, that was a little bit of luck there, all right? In long-distance running, again, fitness does not lie. There's no... I just don't believe that there's luck in long-distance running. You put in the work, and you make it happen. So again, for me, it's not about mental toughness. It's about mental confidence. Why? Your body's gonna win. If you go out too hard in a marathon and you blow up at mile eight, nine, 10, you're in for a long day. It, it doesn't matter, in my opinion, it doesn't matter how mentally tough you are up here, your legs are gonna win the day. I'm sorry. It's just like, this is biology, this is anatomy, this is how we are built. Like, we can push hard, and I think you need to set high, high goals, but that's different from um, being so, like, mentally geared up for a race that you think that you're gonna go out and do something that you haven't trained for. Again, fitness does not lie. Okay, strategy number one. So those are kind of my rules that I've laid out for myself. The three rules. Strategy number one, so that you are mentally confident going into a peak race. Know thyself. I've said this many times. Number one, know thyself. Why? I'm not going to break. I'm not going to break 205 in a marathon. I'm not built for that. I'm not going to break Thir uh, 1330 in a 5k okay it's just it's it's beyond me so why set yourself up for disappointment by setting goals that are just ludicrous but but on the flip side i was a 1627 guy in high school for the 5k and i walked on to the cu cross country team so it's a balance i'm not saying don't dream but know thyself. How hard are you willing to work? All right, up here in your heart. Like, are you willing to put in the work? Because that will give you the mental confidence to go out and achieve your goals and your dreams. But one more example. I just saw a documentary on marathon running. And this lady, it took her 18 marathons to qualify for the Boston Marathon to get the BQ. It took her 18 times. So I'm not saying don't dream, but just make sure your goals have a reality check, okay? Oh man, I could talk about that all night. Strategy number two for developing mental confidence, all right? What's the other option? The other option for me is sitting on the couch. Who wants to sit on the couch? Now, some people want to sit on the couch and play, uh, I don't know, NBA 2K or FIFA or I don't know what, get Fortnite. Is that a game these days? Like, I don't do that, but like some people enjoy that. For me, I would rather be out running, okay? And I'm sure many of you would as well. So 
Think about if you are have anxiety approaching a peak race, anxiety approaching a, a big workout, getting ready for a peak race. Like today, like I was a smidge anxious. I'll be totally transparent. But then I was like, I, as I was driving to the location, I was just thinking to myself, what's the other option? The other option is to be sitting on my rump at the house and typing at the computer. Like, of course, I would much rather be challenging myself, striving for this particular workout goal, and uh, hopefully building up my fitness for the peak race. So again, strategy number two, think about the other option. Think about the flip side. Or if you've had injuries and you're sitting on your couch in a boot because you've got a stress fracture, that's happened to me nine times in my life. Nine times I've sat on a couch with a boot on my foot because of stress fractures, okay? So I've been there, I've lived it, and I think if you are a person of good health when it comes to long distance running, relish it. Just live in that goodness and enjoy it and put it, put it toward more motivation for good solid training. All right, so that's strategy number two. And now the third and final strategy for building up your mental confidence in long distance running. Here we go. Strength by inches. Now, maybe you've heard death by inches. That's a, I've heard that in football, but I prefer the other. I prefer strength by inches. That's right. What's between our ears? That's right. Our brain. Listen to this. I had no clue. I looked this up today, double checked it. Here we go. Our brains, our brains have a hundred trillion, not billion, a hundred trillion connections in our brains. How crazy is that? And we've got 87 billion cells in our brains, what we call neurons, 87 billion, just like doing what they do up there, talking, creating memories, creating emotions, uh, giving us our personalities, um, uh, and, and yes, giving us the free will, and now listen, some of my philosophy professors at the University of Colorado would argue that we don't have any free will. I would go against that. In my humble opinion, it is our free will as long distance runners to get out there and choose the suffering, choose the workout, choose for me the track. Remember, I don't, I don't really love going to the track, so I have to use my will to say, okay, I know I need the track, I need that speed work, I'm going to the track today, all right? So anyway, that is strategy number three, strength by inches. We do have the capability right up here to make the choice when it's dark and cold out, when it's hot and it's coming here in the Northern Hemisphere, it's gonna get hot out, it's harder to run in the heat, where we have to make the choice to say, okay, this is it. If I don't do this workout, if I don't hit these times, I'm gonna have to run slower in my next race. It's just that simple in my humble opinion again fitness does not lie so that is my strategy number three i always remember it's my choice it's my free will i'm out here in inflicting pain upon myself and i've learned to enjoy that to embrace it and frankly to love it all right mental keyword is mental question of the day what is your biggest mental challenge when it comes to long distance running? And is it getting more difficult for you or are you, are you overcoming it slowly? So what that's, it's a tough one. You're going to have to hit pause and think about it. Like, okay, yeah. What is my mental challenge? Or maybe you have, maybe you've overcome a mental challenge in, in running through your own strategy. So let us know down in the comments. That would be amazing. Thank you for being here. I know that was a lot. And again, like I'm not afraid to label these things mental toughness, but I prefer mental confidence. I just think it's a, it's a nice way. If you can be mentally confident, um, it's like, and, and it comes, it comes, it comes through work. It comes through work. That's it. All right, we will call it there. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Thank you for being here. I know that was a lot. That was fun though. I'm glad we could talk about that together. I hope it helps just a little bit, just a little bit. See you tomorrow.